Hey there guys, this is Ron Legrand and I've been asked so many times to go through the agreements to do an axe deal. I thought today would be a good time to do it since the ladies have badgered me into it. I have uh, uh, Debbie, I wish you were here, I have Debbie standing on the table <laughs> behind a camera shooting down at me and I have Emily, come on Emily, come here, let, let them see what Emily here. Emily's on the keyboard today because she's got, that's Emily, Hello. right there. All right, you can sit back down now Emily. Now look guys. If you're watching this, this is the Gold Club site, the membership site. So if you're watching this and you're not a Gold Club member, go to ronsgoldclub.com and get signed up. It'll give you all the benefits there. I'm not going to go through those now. The purpose of this video is about how to use these agreements so you can get through an axe deal, getting yourself five, ten thousand dollars assignment fee. Now in case you don't know what axe is, that stands for Assignment of Contracts and Terms System. If uh, you are not up to date on Axe, I'll give you a chance to get up to date on it when this video is over. But for right now, I'm going to just go through the agreement to buy and the agreement to sell so that you can do that. Uh, we've got plenty of videos that will talk to you about Axe. And again, I have live trainings and I've got courses and so forth. So the first thing that we need to do is get to the agreement. So Emily, this is your Gold Club site. It says resources here. Emily, I want you to go to Forms and Agreements. Got that, guys, if you happen to uh, be near a computer, go on your Gold Club site and follow me if you wish. Pull up Forms and Agreements. Now, since I'm going to be talking about Axe Lease Option Agreements today, that would be under Control Without Ownership. Control Without Ownership. And the agreements that are here are the exact same agreements that it says in my course, the ones we talk about in the boot camps. All right. Emily, if you will scroll down here, we want to start with this one right here. All right, see what this says, folks? This says lease agreement with option to purchase real estate, sandwich lease for sellers. So let me stop there. There's two kind of lease option deals that we're going to do. We're going to do the kind where we lease it from the seller and stay in it and then sublease it to a tenant buyer, collect rent from them, pay rent to the seller, get a difference every month, plus their non-refundable option deposit. We give the seller no deposit, we get a deposit from the buyer, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars and more, and then we have a monthly spread. If we're going to stay in it, we're going to use this agreement because it is a different agreement than the one that we're going to exit with. We don't buy like we sell, we don't use the same agreement to buy that we sell. So let's start here. Now this, this, this would not be an ax deal. If it's an ax deal, we're going to assign our contract. If we're going to stay in it, that means we're going to lease it and this will contact will remain and we'll stay in the deal. Make sure everybody's clear on that. An ax deal is where we assign our contract that we get from the seller. I'll come back to that in a second. Let's first start here. Emily, if you'll open that up for me. You guys can go right on here. It's the same agreement we use every time we do one of these deals. Uh, go ahead and download the form. These forms are right here for you to fill in the blanks on. You can print them out blank, you can fill in the blanks and then print them out, fill in, or you can email them to your attorney blank or filled out. So my goal here today is to scan this agreement. I am certainly not going to stand here and read it word for word. I'm going to scan it and show you the important parts of it. Then you can go download it if you're a member and read it. You'll find that it's in layman's language. There's no big words in it and I think you'll be able to understand it just fine. You need to do that in the peace and quiet of your own home without interruptions and so we have, when you get into a seller's home you'll know what you got in your hand and you, and you won't look so dumbfounded. Alright, let's start right here. Bot uh, top of the thing, buyer, seller, standard stuff. Let's go to number two here. You see it asks for a term. The term of this lease option bill shall be for a period of blank months commencing on blank and ending on blank. You just got to decide how long that's going to be and fill in those blanks. And here's what I wrote in here. The term will be automatically extended for blank periods of blank months unless the tenant buyer gives notice to the landlord. I wrote that in there on purpose because uh, in the past agreement, uh, the uh, tenant had to give notice to the landlord or the agreement wasn't extended. Well, now it's automatically extended unless the tenant, meaning you, tells the landlord that you're going to stop it. So you don't have to try to remember to extend it. Possession shall be given to the tenant buyer on blank date. So, pretty standard. Moving on up, please. The third one is where you're paying the rent to the seller. Remember, in this case, you are the tenant. 
You're lease optioning it from the seller, but you intend to stay in it. It says you're paying blank number of dollars per rent for a blank number of period of time, and your security deposit will be zero because we don't give security deposits. We're not going to give the seller anything. We're going to give. We're going to relieve them of the uh, uh, repairs. We're going to take on that responsibility when we get to it, and we're going to start making them a monthly payment when we decide that we're going to start. But we don't give deposits with lease option deposits in most cases. All right. So that's that. Number four is your option to purchase. This is what grants you the option to purchase. When you get a chance to read it, you'll see that it's pretty self-explanatory. You want to move that on up, please, and we'll get back to the price here in a minute. Uh, number six uh, says that the seller will maintain fire coverage on it, standard stuff. Number seven is breached by the tenant. They're the only, uh, well, let's read it. If the tenant buyer shall fail to keep and perform any of the covenants, yada, 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 or if the tenant buyer shall abandon the property, it shall, law, it shall be lawful for the landlord to enter into the property, standard stuff. Okay, go ahead. Now this one, cost of improvements, um, it says that any repairs done on the property are the responsibility of the tenant buyer and they have to uh, and they have to have permission of the seller to do them is what that says right there. Now this next paragraph number nine is pretty important. It, it states the uh, encumbrances on the property. See it says the first mortgage in favor of blank and the approximate amount blank. All we're doing is putting it in this agreement that everybody is aware that there's an underlying debt on it or if there's an IRS tax lien or if there's property taxes owed that's where it's it's put right in the agreement. Okay, number ten says that we do have the right to assign this contract, so we are. It's a fully assignable. Now that will not be in the other one we talk about in a minute. So that's an important ingredient here because we fully we we don't intend to assign this contract. But why not have the rights in there? It doesn't cost any extra if we wanted to. Uh, again, we're going to lease option it from the seller with this one. We're going to create a whole different contract to put a tenant buyer in the house. All right, number eleven. Scroll it on up. This says that the tenant buyer accepts the property as is, and we're taking on the responsibility for all the repairs, but it also says down here that if any repairs are needed in excess of blank, and you've got to fill in that blank, I'd put maybe $50 in there, at the commencement of the lease, now watch this, or within 30 days after occupancy, yes, I wrote that in there, so that the 30 days by which the seller is responsible for the repairs doesn't start until after you put a tenant buyer in the property. Just a little play on words there, but, it, but in other words, you don't want to lease the property, take a month to rent it, your 30 days is up, nobody's even been in the house. Because when you put a tenant buyer in the house, you're going to warrant their major systems for the thir first 30 days as well. So all you've done is have the seller warrant the same thing you're warning to the buyer, so you don't ever have to come out of pocket. Okay, moving on up, please. Special provisions would be where you put anything extra uh, that you want to agree upon. You know, like sellers to paint the living room before I take possession, or whatever the case may be. And it says here that you'll do a title search, and I've written in here that if the title is not clear, that the seller will pay for the title search. All right, option to purchase. This is where we determine what our purchase price are going, is going to be. Put it right there in that blank. And... The next one, 15, is what we include in the purchase. That means if we want the range in the refrigerator, and well, the range in the refrigerator is built in here, if you'll notice. We don't even have to write that in there. But if we want the John Deere tractor and the Mercedes in the garage and whatever, that's where you put it, right there. Okay? Move it on up, please. Closing. Uh, it means we have to notify them we're ready to close. And number 18 just outlines the cost that the buyer is going to pay and the cost that the seller is going to pay and you're going to have to probably get a little help where you live to determine what those costs are because they're different in every single state. Alright, move it on up and here you go, you're at the end of this agreement. So that wasn't all that complicated, I promise you if you read it you'll clearly understand it. Uh, you're the tenant buyer, the landlord, the seller. So you both sign it and you have an agreement. Once this is uh, signed, you literally control their house for whatever term you, you both agreed upon. Okay, Emily, let's move over to back to the um, table of contents so we can find the, go back again, so we can find the uh, previous, there we go. All right, so let's scan it up now, and all the way up, here it is. It says here, Real Property Possession and Lease Agreement Acts for Buyers. Go ahead and bring that one up. So, 
I just showed you the agreement that we're going to use to take possession of the property or buy a lease with an option if we're going to stay in the deal. Now, I'm going to show you the agreement that we're going to use, whether we intend, if we're going to put uh, a tenant buyer in a house that we own or control, or it's the same agreement we're going to use to install an axe buyer. So just remember this. If I'm putting a lease option tenant buyer in the house, I'm going to use this exact same agreement regardless of how I took control of the house. Tenant buyer installed from us means this agreement. And if you go ahead and hit it there, you'll, you'll it's, notice it's that this agreement, when it comes up, will have a table of contents on it. Now it's clearly marked, but if you just remember, table of contents means I'm installing a tenant buyer in my house or I'm installing one that I intend to assign a contract I got from the seller. So let me be a little more clear on that. If I know it's an ax deal, when I go out to the seller's house, because the seller's asking retail price, or the seller's asking a higher monthly payment than I want to pay, or it's over leveraged. If I know it's an ax deal, and I go to the house, this is the agreement that I'm going to get signed by the seller as well. Because my intent is to, to get the seller to agree and then assign this exact same agreement to a tenant buyer that I find that the seller approves and collect a five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar fee. That in its simplest terms is ACTS, Assignment of Contracts and Terms System. Now these things come and some of them are free and clear and we negotiate seller financing or lease option terms. Some of them have a mortgage, we negotiate lease options. Some of them are over leveraged and we negotiate lease options. So they come in all forms. Okay, so here's the agreement open. Notice the table of contents here. So again, Table of contents means you're installing a tenant buyer in the house. Now, here's the rub. So if you're groggy right now, smack yourself, uh, and, or stop this video and go take a pill and come back, because you've got to get this, what I'm about to say. This agreement is used whether I'm installing a tenant buyer in my own house, whether I own it, whether I bought a bank-owned property and I'm leasing it out, whether I've leased it from the seller and intend to stay in it on a sandwich lease. Regardless of how I bought it, I'm using this agreement to install a tenant buyer in the house. However, there's a difference. If I intend to stay in the deal, I'm going to use an, a different Exhibit A than if I intend to assign this contract. I'll come back to that and make sure you understand the differences. This agreement is the one I've used to install a tenant buyer, therefore it's the one I'm going to use to install a tenant buyer in a seller's house to protect them. This one is prone to the seller. This one protects the seller. The other one protects you more as the buyer that we just explained. So let's go on and get into this agreement here, Emily. And again, I am not going to sit here and read this agreement. We're going to go through the key points. Uh, initial term, now I can tell you right now, that there, everything that has to do with math, like payments and term, is all going to go into Exhibit A. That's why that's an important exhibit. See, it doesn't mention the term here. It says see Exhibit A. It doesn't mention the price, the rent. It says see Exhibit A. So go ahead and scroll it on up. Uh, security deposit, that'll be zero. Well, uh, because you're not charging a security deposit, you're charging a non-refundable option deposit. Big, big difference. Security deposits, they fight over landlord court. Option deposits, they don't. Okay, go ahead. Move. Smoke detectors. All right, here's an important paragraph. Stop. In this paragraph, it says that the tenant buyer, your tenant buyer, is responsible for all of the repairs after the first 30 days. It warrants the systems and just the systems. That's plumbing, electric, heating, and AC for just the first 30 days. So if they move in there and they want to change the shower door, you know, don't call me, call the shower door guy. See, right here, 30-day warning. But that's 30 days after they uh, take occupancy. So remember, your seller is warranting the same thing for the same 30 days. So you shouldn't have to come out of pocket to do any repairs. All right, moving on up. Appliances, this says if they're in there, they're, they belong to me, but you repair them. And, and if you don't like it, change them. That's what that says. Uh, I'm not warranting any appliances, and I'm not fixing any appliances, whether I own them or whether I don't. Alterations says they can't do alterations without my permission. Go ahead. Rules, standard stuff, standard stuff, standard stuff. Deals with all the things that are in normal leases. You'll have to read that when you get a chance. 
Pets says you have the right to charge a pet deposit if you want, and that's referred to in Exhibit A as well. Go ahead. Insurance, renter's insurance tells them they ought to get their own policy. Tells them we don't know if it's got radon gas and we're not going to have it checked. Go ahead. Um, assignment and subletting, they, the lessee may not assign this agreement unless, without your permission, and you're likely not going to give them permission. Moving on up. Attorney's fees, if we have to sue, the winner pays, is what that says. And default and cross default, well, all that means is, in this case, if they're guaranteeing the lease to you, which they are, and the default, you can sue them for the full amount of the remaining lease. You're likely not going to do what you can. What the leverage you have is you're going to eat their entire uh, non-refundable op option deposit. Go ahead. Um, standard stuff, standard stuff, standard stuff. Moving on up. Hold it. Late payment. It's got a 10% after five day late pay payment built right into your lease, which is what I've been charging forever. Go ahead. Failure to go ahead. It says they can't record it, but they can't. It's not ready to record. There's no witnesses or notary. On up, on up, on up, on up, on up. Standard, 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 standard stuff. Okay? By and large, it's a normal lease with except for the exceptions that I just went over with you. Read it. I tell you the best time to read this is right before you're trying to go to sleep. You'll be out like that. All right, let's move on up to this exhibit A. Now this is actually, this is the beginning of this exhibit. It doesn't look like that on the screen, but it'll print out differently. Okay, let's or let's see. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, describe the premises and put the address. Now here's the important part, stop. Notice it says here, the initial term, the lease shall commence on blank day of blank and end on midnight on the blank day. So if the day was January the 1st, then the lease would end on December the 31st, however many years off I want it to end. Now, I can tell you by looking at this exhibit, this exhibit is the one where you're staying in the deal, most likely, because it is fixed, unlike an ax, which changes with a loan amount. This here says the rent is fixed. The annual rent is blank, shall be paid monthly installments of blank because they're fixed. So this Exhibit A, the first one, will be used if I'm going to install somebody in the property and the rent and the initial term is fixed, all right? Unlike the Axel one, I'll get, which I'll get to here in a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and move on up. This is the option agreement. This is what gives you the right to buy. You don't want to miss this agreement. Uh, option E, option or, okay, moving on up. Standard stuff. Now, therefore, in consideration of. Here's where the non-refundable option deposit go. So if a tenant buyer is giving you $10,000, that's where it goes, right there. And then the purchase price. If the purchase price is fixed, that's, they will go right there. And this is, becomes a very simple agreement to fill out. Go ahead. Um, standard language, frankly, is pretty easy. This says that if there's any arbitration, as does the lease agreement, that if there's any disputes, it'll be dealt with with arbitration, which is what you want in all your agreements, folks. Arbitration. Simplest way out. No jury trial, none of that expensive stuff. Okay? Uh, all right. That takes care of that. Let's move it on up here. Now, uh, this down payment assistance addendum is an addendum which you probably should not try to use unless I train you because this deals with me uh, getting a tenant in the house and then getting them to pay extra money per month toward their down payment. And... Uh, you probably should know how to make that happen, but just know, go read it, and it's kind of self-explanatory. Whenever I put tenant buyers in houses that I intend to stay in the deal, I always try to get more out of them per month than their rent by letting them pay in toward their down payment, kind of a down payment installment program. Okay, so that's that. All right, go on up. Let's see if there's anything else I want to deal with. I think we're at That's the end of the lease option agreement where I install somebody with a fixed payment and a fixed term. So now... Let's go to the two exhibits. There's only two exhibits that change this from a normal deal to an ax deal that I intend to assign to someone else. One of those exhibits is for the lease option agreement. One of them is for the option agreement. So we'll go there now. Okay, everybody, now we're going to get to that uh, exhibit A that applies to an ax deal. Now, it's up in front of you. Really, the only difference is right down at the bottom. So if you'll go down to... C, you'll see that we just using a 10-year term instead of a two-year term, so that's fixed. But look at D. In D, it says that the current monthly rent is blank 
and will increase or decrease to equal the payment on the underlying loan for the term of the lease. The lessor will notify the lessee in writing with notice and evidence of increase or decrease at least 30 days prior to payment change terms. Now, see, I had to do that because if you're assigning a property that is over leveraged to a tenant buyer for a 10 year lease, that, t that payment is absolutely going to increase over that 10 year period because taxes and insurance are going to change. So to protect the seller, I didn't want the buyer, the tenant to be paying less per month than the seller was paying out. So by adding that uh, paragraph down there to D, it protects the seller. Now again, you will only use that Exhibit A when you're assigning a lease that has a non-fixed payment as we do when we're uh, assigning one on an over leveraged house and that's generally what you're going to use that for is an over leveraged house. Okay, now let's go to the Axe Option Exhibit C. If you will look in the middle of the page where it says now therefore in consideration of mutual covenants and promises contained herein and the payment of the sum of blank, a non-refundable option deposit. In this case, it's zero because this is the option exhibit you're going to use when you're assigning an option. When you're assigning an option, you are not collecting a non-refundable option deposit. You are not collecting a deposit at all you're collecting an assignment fee. And this, the assignment fee does not go on this option agreement because you're assigning an agreement that you already have signed up with the seller. Remember, we're not creating a new lease or a new option when we control the house with the seller and then sign it to the buyer. We are simply assigning what is already in existence and signed by the seller. So there is no non-refundable option deposit that we give the seller Therefore, it'll say the same when we pass it on to our buyer. Now, look at paragraph number one. If you'll notice on the second line, it says that the purchase price is an asterisk. Okay? And if you look at the end of that paragraph, you'll see those asterisks again. Since on an axe deal that's over leveraged, the purchase price is not fixed, we have to deal with that. And if you look at the last line it says the purchase price equals the loan balance at the time of closing. That means every month the loan balance gets less. So by not putting a fixed number in there we have given our tenant buyer the benefit of the debt pay down. Every time they make a payment on their rent the debt gets smaller so consequently their purchase price gets smaller. But if we don't deal with that in this addendum then there's no way to make it a non-fixed purchase price. Now the second page of the option agreement is the exact same regardless of which one you use. It's just those two little changes that make a big difference. And boy, what you don't want to do is lease option one from a seller using this, this option agreement and have your uh, purchase price fixed if you can help it. I mean, gosh, you could be paying on the thing for five, ten years and your purchase price is the same ten years after you bought it than it was when you bought it. Make this one little mistake and you will not get the benefit of the debt pay down. However, if your option has that same language in it, then you get the benefit of the debt pay down and I know that's what you want. So, that's not every tool in our arsenal, but that's the general agreement you're going to use to control a property with a lease, whether you intend to stay in it or not, and or put a tenant buyer in the house, whether you intend to stay in it or not. Okay, I hope I did more to clear up this agreement stuff for you than I did to confuse you more. Go back and play this thing two or three times, but do it with the agreements in front of you next time, and I think it'll become clear. Now listen, to be honest with you, for you to go and try to do an axe deal without the right training, I'm worried for you because there's just so many ways to make a mess out of it. I'm going to strongly suggest that you order this. This is my Control Without Ownership course. And for you to try to do an ax deal without this system could be detrimental to your wealth and I don't want that to happen. I want to show you what's in this thing and then I'm going to give you a special offer on it. We come this far, let's go the rest of the way and get what you need to get these deals done. You know, our cheapest, our lowest deposit on an ax deal here in my office and we do six or eight of the ax alone a month is $5,000. 
and we've got as high as $35,000. So when you can go out and do a deal that you do not have any risk in, we don't give the seller any money, we don't make any promises we can't keep, attorneys close these things, buying and selling, and you can pick up a check for five or $10,000, don't you think you probably owe it to yourself to get a little bit of training here to do it right? So not only does this come with the training, but it's also got all the forms and agreements in it that we just covered. But let me just give you an idea what's in here. I cover all five steps in a two-day seminar that I recorded. It comes with 10 CDs in here. And then on the 11th CD-ROM are all the agreements that we just discussed. But in here, they are filled out as well as blank. And then the other pieces that are in here as well. I'm going to show you a couple of them here in just a second. But this is a two-day seminar. So if you'll invest 10 hours of your time in this, you will know as much about Axe as anyone who has not done an Axe deal. And uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a real good offer here in a minute, so stay tuned. If you want to do this, this is your best shot at it. I spent a whole lot of time on the front end talking about how to locate prospects, because obviously you have to do that. That's step one of your five steps. And then step two is pre-screening those prospects. Not only will you learn how to pre-screen them in here and quickly determine the difference between a suspect or a prospect, but I am literally giving you the scripts for every type of deal that you could get. There's the script if it's over leverage. You get on the telephone and you read the script. Here's the script if it's uh, an owner financing or a lease purchase. Here's the script if it's a free and clear house and it looks like it's a sandwich lease candidate. Here's the script uh, if you want to do uh, free and clear and the uh, seller's indicated they'll sell with owner financing, which is a totally different uh, uh, kind of uh, deal. And then, here, get here. I even got a script for you to make an appointment. When the seller says, yes, I'm interested, I want you to read this script so you don't make a mess out of making the appointment and don't make uh, trips for nothing. That's all in there. And it even tells you what not to mess with. I've got a section here called Avoid Time Wasters. Then we go into the objections, which comes in with the pr uh, constructing and presenting of the offers. I go through every objection you're ever going to hear from any kind of a seller on these deals. One by one by one, and I knock them out and I give you simple, easy answers that you can either commit to memory or just commit the points to memory so you can answer these objections. Now in the back here, we've got a, little, a few more little forms and agreements that, are, that you need to consider using. For example, here's a letter of intent. Now I don't use this unless the seller asks me to send them something in writing. This is what we send them in writing. However, it's right here if you need it. We got one for buyers, we got one for sellers in here. There's the authorization to release and I want the seller to sign. And then this one is beautiful. This is a general release. I want the seller to sign a general release. I want the buyer to sign a general release. My attorney wrote this. You're going to love these when you read it. Guys, when I'm signing an ax deal, I want out. I don't want any more liability with this deal whatsoever. I want the seller to release me and I want the buyer to release me. So I have one in here for each and uh, my attorney gets them signed so that um, they can't ever come back on me for anything. Remember, an ax deal means that I'm finding a tenant buyer that my seller approves I'm installing them. From that point on, my tenant buyer makes payments to the seller, not to me. I'm not in the middle, unless it's a sandwich lease. In the middle, I'm, no, if it's a sandwich lease, I'm in the middle. Uh, so therefore, we wouldn't be getting the general releases. And um, I teach you in here how to find uh, tenant buyers and pre-qualify them. And then we go through all of the agreements again. Here's the uh, agreement that we went through earlier on this video on how to take possession of the property from a seller. And I go through that and you'll see in here it's filled out so that you can easily understand it. And then of course we got to get through the process of getting the agreement signed. Step by step directions are in here. All the forms, all the agreements, questions and answers, objections, everything. And then now we got the property under contract, now we got to go get it sold. So the complete selling system is in here. The follow up and the, and the getting the money on the table. I teach you how to find an attorney, without what to send the attorney. Look, I've even got a buyer's information sheet in here. I teach you how to build a buyer's list by having a virtual assistant fill this form out and stick it in your uh, free database. And now, next time you get a house for sale, we just send them an email or a text and boom, here they come. I teach you how to qualify these tenant buyers, what I'm looking for. Um, and what, and what, we'll whack them in a hurry because uh, I don't care how much money they got. There are some things that I will not put up with with these tenant buyers. And um, I'm, you know, a very simple, easy qualification process, not no long, grown-out deal. 
when a tenant buyer comes to us and we like what we hear because they got enough money to satisfy us and we feel like they can make the down payment okay, or the, uh, the, we will uh, then have a meeting. I teach you how to conduct that meeting, what you want them to bring to that meeting, and how to get their down payment, uh, how to make them pay more per month on my down payment assistance program. I covered that in here as well. So, uh, because we get two, three hundred dollars a month more than rent when we put a tenant buyer in a house and give them the option to buy. Um, I, t I'm, I'm, I teach you how to make sure that it's clear to the tenant buyer that the responsibility for the repairs are theirs, what to discuss at this meeting, including the late penalty. There's the assignment where I assign my agreement to the tenant buyer. It's all in here ready for you to send to your attorney and get the attorney to complete and get the tenant buyer to sign. And then, of course, there's the general release for the buyer. So, guys, I've got you covered. Everything you need to do the control without ownership business is in this system. Even if the tenant defaults, I've got a whole section in here on what to do exactly if, in fact, you put somebody in a house and they don't make you payments. And then common questions from real estate entrepreneurs and common questions from tenant buyers. This is a complete system, and it's called Control Without Ownership. We've sold a lot of these things. This whole business is less than two years old, but this is the business in a box right here. Now, i got a special offer for you. The purchase the cost on this is $997. That's $997. Okay, that might sound a lot to you, but remember, it's not about buying a book. It's about buying the valuable information in here. And of course, I would ask you, just how many axe deals do you have to do to make $997 a no-brainer decision? Like that's one-fifth of the smallest one that we've ever done here in my office. And by the way, we've done over a hundred of these axe deals since this thing was created a little less than two years ago. This complete system, we'll send it to you right away. All you got to do is order it. It's $9.97. And I will make sure that if you order it right now, before this offer expires, that we'll give you a 90-day hotline. That means for 90 days, you can pick up the telephone or email five days a week, seven hours a day, to help you guide you through these deals. For 90 days, you've got somebody by your side so you're not out there in the wilderness all alone. So for $997, you're in the control without ownership business, sandwich leasing and um, acts. Also, what I didn't tell you is I've got the whole option business in here where we option properties for price A, sell them for price B, and get six-figure plus checks. So it's all right there. Now, if you order right now, $997 is your price. And incidentally, I know that might be a bite for some. So if you go to the order page, you'll see that there's an option on there for three payments. If you wish, you can pay $3.97 and have three payments, and we'll ship you the course and set up your terms there. Yeah, it costs you a little bit more. You save $200 by paying it in full. But if you can't, you can't. I'm, I want you to have this system. I want you to send me your testimonial letters. I want you to send me your pictures in front of the houses and your copies of your checks and so forth. And in fact, here comes a shameless pride for you to do just that. I have in my hand here, for the first 20 to order, the first 20 only, is a rebate certificate. And what this says is, you get my Axe course, you have 60 days to do a deal that I teach you how to do in this system. If within that 60 days you get this deal done, of which, uh, by the way, it don't take 60 days to do an Axe deal. In fact, most of them are done in less than a month. Uh, some of them are done even a lot faster. But when you get your first one done, Send me evidence of it. Send me a copy of the, uh, some proof that you did the deal. Send me a description of it with your photo and a check if you got it. And I will literally give you back the entire $9.97 you spent on this course. Uh, all I want from you is your testimonial and proof that you did it. You got 60 days. So it's a shameless bribe to get you out there and get going and do one of these ax deals. And remember, you got help. You got 90 days to call in the hotline all day, every day. So you got the help right there. By the time you get through this system and you use my guy to help you, uh, you should be able to do one in 60 days. Let me give you your money back. Now what's your investment? Let's see. 997 minus 997 is zero. So there's no risk for you. Even if you don't do one with the 60 days, I'm telling you, when you get this in your hands, you're not going to care what it costs you. This thing has changed our industry. This business has changed our industry. This ax thing has literally taken people from nothing and nowhere that weren't doing any deals and put them in a position where they're doing two or three of these things a month, somewhere between five and $20,000 a month. By the way, if you buy this, 
get it, you're not happy, you have 30 days to return it with absolutely no questions asked. 100% refund. And then you got 60 days to do a deal. I'll give you your money back and you still keep the course. Is that fair? So order right now. I hope this video has been of help to you. And uh, we'll get this in the mail to you right away. And this uh, rebate certificate will be attached to the top of it. See you soon.